son has arrived from London, sir. Father. John. John. You will find out soon enough from my will that the estate of Norland was left to me in such a way as prevents me from dividing it between my two families. Calm yourself, Father. This cannot be good for you. Norland, in its entirety, is therefore yours by law, and I am happy for you and Fanny. But your stepmother, my wife and daughters, are left only 500 pounds a year, barely enough to live on nothing for the girls' dowries. You must help them. Well, of course. You must promise to do this. I promise, Father. I promise. Help them? What do you mean, help them? Dearest, I mean to give them £3,000. The interest will provide them with a little extra income. Such a gift will certainly discharge my promise, my father. I have a question more than amply. One had rather, on such occasions, do too much than too little. Of course, he did not stipulate a particular sum. Fifteen hundred pounds, then. What do you say to fifteen hundred? What brother on earth would do half so much for his real sisters? Let alone half blood. Well, they can hardly expect more. There's no knowing what they expect. The question is, what can you afford? A hundred pounds a year to their mother while she lives. Would that be more advisable? It is better than parting with the fifteen hundred all at once. But if she should live longer than fifteen years, she'd be completely taken in. People always live forever when there is an annuity to be paid them. Twenty pounds now and then will amply discharge my promise. You're quite right. Indeed. Although, to say the truth, I'm convinced within myself that your father had no idea of your giving them money. They will have five hundred a year amongst them as it is. And what on earth could four women want for more than that? Their housekeeping will be nothing at all. They'll have no carriage, no horses, hardly any servants, and will keep no company. Only conceive how comfortable they will be. They will be much more able to give you something. 